multi-factor authentication is easier to deploy than ever. Uh, we can integrate directly into Active Directory. So multi-factor authentication, ESA, is a very, very lightweight install. The actual install is all of about 33.6 megabytes. So we can install it on every machine in your infrastructure if multi-factor authentication is deemed necessary. So essentially the way that it works is once it's installed, the end user enters their standard password. Then there's a push notification or one-time password that they can access through a mobile, uh, mobile app on their phone, iOS, or Android. Then from there, once they either accept the push notification or enter the one-time password, they get access to all the company's internal data. Now, as a side note, if you have things like uh, YubiKeys or Nagra ID hard tokens, we can integrate those as well, so that way you can deploy those instead of a mobile app. You know, in some cases, the end users don't like using their, their own devices for these things. You can use ESA to protect uh, the remote desktop protocol, uh, standard Windows login, so operating system login, anything through Active Directory Federated Services, and things like uh, Office 365 or SharePoint Online, the Outlook web app, uh, VMware Horizon View machines, or anything that's uh, able to use RADIUS for authentication, so things like VPN for firewall logins. So what does it look like on the back end? With AD integration, it simply adds another tab to the user's AD profile where the admin can choose how they want that user to be activated to use secure authentication. Now, once secure authentication is in place, it's only activated for the users that you turn on within their AD profile. That way you don't have to worry about making a decision for every user right off the bat. So within the, the actual tab, you can choose how you want them, their token to be set up. Do you want them to use one-time passwords or push notifications in the mobile app? Do you want to assign a hard token? Do you need to unlock them? That's all done within the, um, the Active Directory tab here. Now, on the admin side, we've got the actual management uh, console, which is an MMC snap-in. The nice thing about this is if you have multiple assets that all require different levels of security from the multi-factor uh, service, you can install the management snap-in on every machine that needs it. Now, the other thing as well is ESA can act in its own self-designated high availability mode. So as long as you have the admin console and authentication console installed across multiple devices in your network, if one was to fail, it can automatically fail over to one that's still running. And what does it look like for the end user? So say I go to log in to my machine and I've got multi-factor enabled, uh, in this case, push notifications. I get a little pop-up after login that says uh, ESET Secure Authentication, Approved Login ID number 722. I'm going to get a buzz on my phone, and I'm going to see this from the Secure Authentication mobile app, which is essentially that same information, ID number 722. That way, if there's two concurrent logins, I know which one I'm seeing. It shows that the user is Anthony, and the IP address of the login is 192.168.86.132, and this is kind of an old screenshot back in, in December. But if it's me, and I'm sitting in front of the computer, and I know it's me, I can go ahead and, and hit approve. If it's not me, and I'm at lunch with Ben, for example, then I can go ahead and hit reject and contact either my admin or, say, managed security solution provider, something like that, and make sure this gets dealt with. Once I go ahead and hit approve, boom, access granted, and I now have access to all of my assigned internal resources. So in the end, multi-factor authentication with ESA is now easy to manage and easy for end users. So why should I be using this, or why should you be using this? Well, let's start off with the basics. Uh, not enough people actually use it. Among the most underused technologies in the small, medium business mid-market space, uh, speaking with our research team over the years, they continually tell me that implementing 2FA is the single easiest way to protect the human element. The knowledge 
or the, the worker that uh, lacks knowledge, the user that keeps using passwords, say one, two, three, four, or their tax names, or their birthday. And, it, and it's just important. I, IT departments don't rigorously enforce password policies enough. Next up, we're going to jump in to ESET Threat Intelligence. So with ESET Threat Intelligence, we provide direct access to our malware research team to get any samples analyzed quickly. So once a sample is submitted, our team will compile a full report on any threat that is found with everything from the behavior of the malware, when it was first seen, what domains or IPs are associated with it, and any related threats. All of this is pulled together with our ESET library of reputation information and compiled as an easy to interpret PDF which is stored in the client's ETI portal. So there are several levels of service provided from ESET Threat Intelligence Services. Um, so the portal, first off, gives you the information directly from ESET's global malware team, which you'll see a screenshot of momentarily. So this will allow you to directly upload threats that uh, you or your customers encounter, things like targeted malware, APT, directed attacks, or even just suspicious files, and receive full reports on uh, – human readable reports, sorry – on a, on all of the kind of attributes of the, of the malware being analyzed. You can receive weekly reports from security, the security teams um, with everything that we're seeing out in the field. That way, if you wanted to feed this information directly into, say, something like a SIM or a firewall, uh, we can even provide those reports as direct data feeds. Uh, we use what's called the STIX format. It's an XML format delivered through our taxi server. So that there's a couple new acronyms for you. But essentially, STIX is the standardized format in information security for delivering threat feed information. So, you know, any modern firewalls, um, IDS or IPS sensors in, within, the, uh, within the customers or your environment will be able to receive our, our STIX data, so our direct data feed. 